In this video, we're going to be talking about exponential functions and their graphs. So let's start by looking at the parent function of an exponential function. Here we have the f of x equals a raised to the x, where a is greater than 0, and a doesn't equal the number 1, and x is any real number. So notice here that we have a graph where we have f of x equals a raised to the x, and a crucial point here is this 0, 1. That point will always be there. On the other graph, we have f of x equals a to the negative x. Notice how that reflected across the y-axis. And we also have that point still there, 0, 1. Now another point that's helpful when we go to start sketching and doing things would be the point 1, a when we have f of x equals a raised to the x, and negative 1, negative a when f of x equals a raised to the negative x. Let's take a look at how the transformations occur when we're dealing with exponential functions. We've dealt with transformations a lot, and so we just want to know, do those transformations work the same way with an exponential function, or does anything change? So if we look, we see that our negative in the front still reflects our function across the x-axis. Our a value in the front is going to represent a vertical stretch or shrink depending on the value of the number. If the number is larger than 0, it will be a stretch, and if the number is between 0 and 1, it will be a shrink. The negative sign in the exponent reflects across the y-axis. The m represents the horizontal stretch or shrink. Here, our stretch is going to happen if the number is between 0 and 1, and the shrink will happen if the number is larger than the number 1. Our h will move our function left or right. If we see a plus sign, it will move it to the left, and if we see a minus sign, it will move it to the right. And our k value will still move it up or down, up or down, up for a plus sign and down for a minus sign. So even though the equations look changed, the way that things get transformed stays the same. Let's do a quick example of a transformation. So here it's asking us to describe the transformation from f of x to g of x, and we're going to let f of x equal 3 raised to the x. So here our parent function is 3 raised to the x. So if we look at letter a, we have 3 raised to the x plus 1. So that plus 1 tells us it's going to do something. That's in the h's spot, and we see a plus sign. So that means it's going to move to the left one unit. Let's take a look at letter B. Here, we have g of x equals negative 3 raised to the x minus 2. In this example, we have a negative in the front of the 3 and a minus 2 at the end. So our negative in front of the 3 is going to represent a reflection across the x-axis. And our minus 2 at the end, because it's not in the exponent, is the k value, which means it's also going to go down two units. So how do these transformations look when it comes to function notation? So in function notation, if we're talking about a horizontal translation, we're going to see f of x minus h or f to the x plus h. And examples are to the right where we see what that exactly looks like for an exponential function. Notice that horizontal translations occur up in the exponent. Vertical translations are the k values and looks like f of x plus k and f of x minus k, where again our k occurs outside of the exponent. Reflection occurs so that it looks as f of negative x or negative f of x and can occur either in the exponent or not in the exponent depending on which axis you are reflecting across. A horizontal stretch and shrink would look like f of a times x or f of 1 over a times x. Again, depending on what the value is would depend on if it's a stretch or a shrink. And notice that that occurs up in the exponent. And then lastly, our vertical stretch and sh shrink is going to look like an m times fx and a 1 over m times fx. And there, we see that the stretch and the shrink, again, it depends on what the value is of the number, whether it's a stretch or a shrink, and that occurs outside of the exponent. 
So now we know a little bit more about exponential functions and how they transform and what that looks like.